Hey guys, welcome back to M. Calling's Art. Today we're talking about correction layers in Clip Studio Paint. These are also called adjustment layers in Photoshop or color adjustments in Procreate. These types of layers are super useful in a lot of different contexts. A lot of the time I'm using these to alter artwork that's already finished or mostly completed. Um, but there are a couple of other things you can do like removing line art from a sketch layer and altering the color of a very specific selection that are really useful in the middle of your process as well. You can access these layers by going to Layer, New Correction Layer. You can also go into your Layers menu and right click on any of the layers that you'd like to edit or the top layer if you'd like everything to be um, affected by the correction layer. This first one that I'm demoing is Brightness and Contrast. You can see I can add a little bit more moodiness to this piece by lowering the brightness and upping the contrast. There's a lot of different little tweaks you can do with this. This is one of the least subtle correction layers, but it is really good for like photographs and um, if you're doing like listing photos for Etsy or something, it's really helpful to be able to kind of adjust that stuff really easily. Most of the time when I'm using this type of correction layer, it's to adjust a contrast issue. So I have a final piece that has an issue with the contrast. When I go check it, it needs a little bit more brightness or a little bit more contrast added. This next one is probably my very favorite, hue, saturation, and luminosity. It's a little bit more subtle than brightness and contrast. You have a little bit more control and you also have the hue slider, which gives you just sort of an overall color change and kind of shifts the hue of the whole piece. You can see it's affecting all of the colors. Um, later in the video, we'll show how to kind of move these layers up and down to only affect the layers that you want and kind of mask out the ones that are being affected that like shouldn't be. So if we wanted to adjust the hue of just this character in the front or just the background, I'll show you guys how to do that. You can see right here, if you open the layers menu, it's opened a new correction layer. We can hide and show it to kind of compare and contrast, and then we can reopen it to readjust. If you want to get rid of an adjustment you've made to a correction layer, you can open your layers menu and just delete the layer. This next one is posterization. I don't use this one a ton. It basically just gives you a number of channels in the colors that you keep. So it kind of it does like a weird effect. This one is reverse gradient, which gives you basically a negative of your image. If you want to get rid of it again, you just go into layers and delete it. I don't use that one a ton. This one is level correction. This is one of the more finicky and kind of subtle ones. You can you can sit and pick through different things on this forever. Um, it's got RGB. You can kind of drop that down. You can change things on specific channels, but you can also kind of use a little histogram here to adjust really, really subtle changes in sort of brightness and contrast and sort of the levels of the piece. I'm not super used to using these. If you're a fan of uh, Adobe Lightroom, this is something you would be pretty familiar with. This one is called Tone Curve. It does kind of a sim similar, very subtle job as uh, the level correction does. It just has a, a curve on the histogram rather than sliders. So this can be used to kind of target very specific effects within the piece. You can see this is sort of lowering the contrast of all of the like subtle colors and only bringing out that weird bright pink in her eyes. So you can do all kinds of things with this. Um, these curves, if you pull the little dots up, I've never seen anybody do that on Clip Studio, but if you pull those dots up, it will get rid of them, which took me forever. Same happens with the brushes when you're editing brushes. If you pull that little like dot to the top, it will get rid of them. So you can see I can get some like really interesting different effects with this with this one piece with a tone curve. Um, it's a really interesting way to get a ton of different variety in your piece. And here's the, the demo of like the red curve if I wanted to edit just the red curve. This basically targets like separate color bands, which is pretty similar to the next one, color balance. Color balance also targets specific tone curves, but it does it in um, sort of a slider. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what like the technical terminology for these is, but it allows you to kind of change the colors 
in a really targeted way. Again, this is one of the more subtle ones, so you can kind of get in here and do really tiny adjustments. As I'm kind of demoing these, you can see I'm jumping clear to the ends of the sliders just to kind of show you guys the different effects. So this one is binarization. I'm, I, I can see how like you could separate line art out with this really easily. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this one. I don't use this one a ton, but you can get some very interesting, like high contrast, no color options for this kind of posterization. This last one is super, super useful. It's gradient map. There's a lot of different ways to use this. You can see it kind of defaults to a black and white grayscale map. And that's a very easy way to change your work to like a really clean gradient if you want that. You can see also as I apply these, it's applying this sort of this mapping technique to the whole piece and you can kind of adjust the little uh, curve and also the slider up at the top, you can adjust where the different colors cut off. This one's really fun to play with, especially if you work in grayscale or you're working on getting your values and then you want to color it with a gradient map. I know a lot of people do that with their illustrations where they'll do just black, white, and gray for the entire piece and then they'll come back afterward and create kind of a custom gradient map to color everything. So there's a really cool kind of sepia one. These uh, somber shades are kind of like a weird, they did like weird things to the, to the dark line art that I kind of was adjusting for here. And I ended up with kind of an interesting kind of like pink scale, I guess, <laughs> version of this piece, which is kind of cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and demo how I use some of these things. So I've got just the little shorts selected here and I've opened, um, I have a little shortcut on my quick menu down when the selection pops up that lets me open the hue saturation, saturation luminosity. Um, I learned that from coloring with Kurt here on YouTube amazing channel for learning how to color. I've picked up so many cool tips for Clip Studio from Kurt. So you can see I'm adjusting the hue, the saturation and the luminosity of just the shorts. This is on my flats layer. So you, there's a lot of cool things you can do with that to kind of adjust if one of your colors feels off to you. The same thing works for um, brightness and contrast. You can open that using the same um, layer menu and then you can kind of adjust the brightness and contrast of just that selected area. Same with color balance. If you if you wanted to really, really subtly tweak the colors, you would use color balance instead of just the hue slider because the hue slider can be a little heavy handed sometimes. You can use those little arrows on the side to, to tick it up or down just one. So this is sort of what I would do if I was looking to adjust this piece after the fact if I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. You have to be kind of careful. You can see kind of up in the gradients in the sky that we're getting a little bit of banding. So anytime you take really subtle gradients like this airbrush tool that I used on this and you put it through hue, saturation, luminosity, you might get some of that weird banding. So there's kind of the before and after if I wanted a, a darker, sort of purpley like nighttime piece for this or like a spooky kind of morning, morning um, fog, I guess. Which is also kind of a cool look for this piece. I really liked this one. And then I did kind of like a too bright, weird kind of pastel-y. So you can see as I've adjusted this, the dark areas like the blacks of my line art are feeling really weird. So I'm gonna scroll down here and apply, like select this area. I don't think you really need to do this. I think you can just right click on the, on the layer you wanna edit. If you're using a PC or you can just do, like you can select layer and just do uh, layer, new correction, hue, saturation, luminosity if you're using an iPad like I am. So now you can see if I if I jack the luminosity clear up, it's not affecting the line art anymore because this layer is under the line art. These correction layers only affect the things that are below them in the layer stack. So you can move them up and down the layer stack like I'm gonna do here and adjust what layers are affected. So I'm moving it kind of like above all my shadows and stuff and that changes kind of the vibe of the piece or I can put it back down towards my flats which gives it like a different, a different look and feel. 
but you can see now that like the liner is kind of isolated. Earlier in the video, I talked about how we can mask areas of these correction layers off. So you can see when these pop up in your layer stack, each of them comes with a built-in mask. So if you click over to the mask, I've got the area of just this kind of character in front selected, and I can use the transparency and the color options on my little um, color selector over there, color slider, I think is what that menu is called. <laughs> but I can use that to basically manipulate the mask. And this is sort of like you could right click and do um, show mask area and that will show you kind of what's being masked out. You can also do this manually with just like a brush if you wanted to go in and mask like a very specific thing out of these correction layers. Every time I use those, I have to switch between transparency and color to figure out which one is going to affect the mask, how, like what, what way. This is if you invert the selection and mask the other way around. This gives you a really interesting look for this piece where you can sort of isolate the character and then do all kinds of weird stuff to just her. I really liked this like ghost version. I thought that was kind of a cool and this one's kind of like a weird netherworld kind of demony vibe, which is also kind of cool. I didn't like it so much in like the green and red. I felt like that was too like Christmassy, but this like purpley dark blue cape was kind of an interesting like weird demony vibe. I think my favorite of all is this sort of like bubblegum pastel-y like neon demon kind of look. This is the demo for removing your line art from your sketch layer. Every digital artist has done this. You start your line art, it's going so good. You go to change one thing and you're like, oh crap, <laughs> I've line arted on my sketch layer again. So this is how you reverse that if you run into this. You're gonna go ahead and duplicate the layer that you've messed up and then you're gonna open a gradient map and you're gonna use that default grayscale and adjust it until those little gray lines are gone. You can kind of see them on her hand still, which is what I'm trying to adjust out. Once those are gone, um, go ahead and click OK, and then you can just flatten that layer down and you'll have a clean line art. You can see underneath that I've kept that kind of like the line art and sketch layer. You can do the opposite also. Open a gradient map for the sketch layer and isolate that one out if you need to. And that's kind of how I use these correction layers. I hope these are helpful. Let me know if you want to learn any more about these in the comments below, or if you have any other questions. I think these are really fun to play with and they kind of give me exposure to color palettes and stuff that I maybe wouldn't normally use, which I think is really helpful. And it also has like a, a bunch of very cool tools. I've been using hue, saturation, and lumina luminosity a lot lately since I, um, went through Kurt's videos just because he uses that a ton to change the colors of his flats, which I think is super quick and useful, especially as I'm trying to color a whole comic right now. I'll go ahead and link a couple of my favorite videos of his in the comments below so you can see those. Thank you so much for watching and making it all the way to the very end. If you're looking for more content like this, there's a recent video on my channel about thumbnailing comics. That's part of a whole series that I'm doing on how I'm working on my very first comic and I think it's turning out really cool. Another great recent video to check out would be Better Line Art, where I show you with any program or with even pen and paper how to improve your line art. These are exercises that I've used to get really smooth line art when I'm feeling a little shaky. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting this video and all of my other cool projects. So thank you so much, Jesse C., Anthony Jutz, and Tara Billy Jean. You guys are amazing and I appreciate your support so much. If you found this video or any of my other videos helpful, you can join my Patreon through the link below. You can also support the channel by subscribing or by liking, sharing, or commenting on this video. See you guys next time.